Modern video game hardware demands higher internet bandwidth than ever before, and you need a robust setup for your video game rig. We're going to take a look at the Netgear Nighthawk X4S cable modem and Wi-Fi router combo with a full unboxing and review, and it starts right now. Hi, my name is Blaine if you're new here, and my channel is all about helping you get the most out of your video game experiences. So if you like original video game content about restoration, repairs, mods, and product reviews, smash the subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss any great original new content. As we get started, I just want to mention, I purchased this out of pocket. This is not a paid endorsement of any kind. It features an ultra high speed DOCSIS 3.1 connection. It's certified to work with Comcast, Xfinity, and Spectrum, which is my cable provider. It replaced a Netgear cable modem that I had for about four years, along with an Apple Airport Extreme. They just weren't cutting it in today's internet. It has four high-performance active antennas, has four gigabit ethernet ports right on the back, and it supports 32 by eight channel bonding. And although the device is capable of gigabit ethernet, your internet service provider and your service plan both have to support it. As we get started on the unboxing, the price on this can vary quite a bit. It retails at $369 US, but at the time of this review was $299 US on sale on Amazon. Link in the description below. A 20% discount off of MSRP is certainly substantial and it's worth checking out. So this sleeve is actually on the box pretty darn tight. I found that opening both sides of the sleeve made it easier to get the contents out from the sleeve. And of course, I don't rip sleeves off of boxes because you know, I'm a collector and I take care of those kind of things. Here's what's inside the box. A stinking piece of cardboard. Okay, just take this thing and get it out of the way. You're gonna get the usual two suspects, quick start and warranty registration stuff. And here's the modem itself. Now that sticker in the bottom right corner is actually the information about setting up your initial Wi-Fi network. So it has a generic Wi-Fi name, a generic Wi-Fi password. Just change those out once you get your modem set up to match the name that you need for your network. Here's the main X4S modem router device. It's definitely a function over form kind of device. It's not the best looking thing. I mean, it kind of has the nifty swooshes on the top of it and all but it is absolutely function over form. It doesn't matter where you put something like this, you need it to work really well. And having these large antennas on the top will certainly help improve both transmission and reception for this device. Or you can just say it's a modern art masterpiece and move on. And of course you get a power supply in the box and an ethernet cable for hooking up the wired aspect of the router to your desktop PC. All right, let's get it set up. Plug it into power and plug in the cable line in the back and contact your cable company to give them the MAC address to get you up and running. You'll see the signal indicator lights come on indicating you're good to go. Then go to the modem's admin settings to finish setup. 192.168.0.1. When you see the admin setup, it'll ask you to do registration, but I want to point out something that doesn't quite go to plan necessarily here. It took three attempts to get the initial setup information to take. I kept clicking on next and nothing would happen. It would not go forward. So just to make sure I wasn't crazy, even though I kind of am, I gave it to my wife and had her do the same thing and she had the same results. It just would not proceed through the setup process. Finally, on the third attempt, it took the information and moved forward. At this price point, and with a trusted brand like Netgear, I kind of would have expected a little better. But it took it, and so moving forward, let's find out what kind of speeds it's getting out of the back of the wired portion of the router. That's certainly the more objective test for whether or not the router is putting out the speeds capable and provided by the internet service provider over going the wireless route. And here you go, this is an iMac 27 inch 2019 edition and it is wired directly into the back of the Netgear Nighthawk. My internet service provider currently provides 
400 megs down and 20 up. And these speeds are rocking. Almost a full 470 down, and it consistently puts out about 23 up. These speeds are well over the rated speeds from the internet service provider, which is Spectrum. So kudos to Netgear for being able to take full advantage of this bandwidth. But as you'll see here, not all that glitters is gold. Here are three separate devices, all connected by the 802.11ac standard. An iPhone XS Max, MacBook Pro 2015, and an iPad Pro 12.9. You'll find that they have varying degrees of speed and connectivity, even though each is roughly about 5 feet away from the Netgear Nighthawk. The iPhone's at 248 megs down, the MacBook at 280 down, and the iPad Pro at a highly respectable 447 down. And generally speaking in repeated testing, they all came up with about the same upload speeds, a little over 20 megs a second upload speeds. But I want to show you this exact same test on the MacBook Pro again because I found this to be problematic. Running that exact same test immediately after the prior one at 280 megs down produced this. And this is a problem to me. It's almost 100 megs a second slower than the test that just immediately preceded it. Now wireless internet connectivity has lots of variables. The channels you're on, what kind of signals your neighbors have, what kind of wireless devices you have in your house, the errors and generations of the devices you're using, and so forth. And this isn't the world's most scientific test, but the results should be replicated generally, and they're not. So let's take a look at what might be at fault here. Back in the admin panel, which Netgear calls the Netgear Genie, let's go ahead and set what's called QoS, or quality of service. That's just a fancy way of saying device priority, meaning you can just say, I want this device to get more bandwidth or more internet than this one. Except that there's a problem this device doesn't support it. It should be right there in the left nav, quality of service, and it just ain't there. Almost all of the modern Netgear routers, except this one it seems, support QoS, and I called Netgear and they confirmed it does not support any kind of device priority management. So it makes its own decisions about which of your devices get how much bandwidth. They also couldn't tell me how the modem and router combo device makes those decisions. If being able to set these priorities is important to you, you may want to look at another device from Netgear. Otherwise, this one should do okay for you. So what's the final verdict on this Netgear Nighthawk X4S? Is it a keeper? It's capable of up to 10 gigabit ethernet, so it's certainly future proof as Spectrum is now offering gigabit ethernet to customers all around the United States. Minor hiccups in the setup process and lack of device priority keep it from getting a perfect five star rating, but it's a strong device. It gets four stars because it absolutely can take the bandwidth that comes in from the cable company and put it right out to these devices, even if it may not be in a perfect order of priority to fit your needs. To see more reviews about products that can help you with your gaming experiences and to learn how to do great restorations, repairs, and mods to your video game hardware, subscribe to the channel now so you don't miss out on any great original content coming up. And if you're already subscribed, check out these videos here. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.